Hello fellow cyborgs, today I'm going to talk to you about the books I bought because of booktubers. Can I have any more alliteration there? So this is kind of a booktuber shout out. The biggest compliment you can give a booktuber is that you buy a book upon their recommendation and upon their recommendation alone. So these books that I'm going to be showing you are not things that cumulatively across booktube, I, you know, it just got hammered into my skull and I decided I needed to buy it. No, these are books that I bought because one booktuber talked about it and that was enough. That was enough for, for my need to overcome my self-control in book buying. Some of these booktubers are my favorites. Some are just very persuasive. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about each booktuber and then show you the books that they inspired me to pick up. First up is Jean from Jean's Bookish Thoughts. She's in knows all about the classics. She's doing her PhD in ancient Greek sexual violence or something like that. So she's definitely the authority on ancient texts of which I have zero experience. That's a lie. I kind of maybe read the Odyssey when in freshman year of high school, but that doesn't count. So upon her recommendation alone, I picked up Daphnis and Chloe by Longus, translated by Ronald McHale. Next, I want to talk to you about Acacia Ives. She's a fairly new booktuber, but becoming like one of my friends on, on booktube and the internets in real life, so that's been very lovely. She's an absolute sweetheart, loves all sorts of strange books, unheard of books, also books that you have heard of from Jen and Mercedes, and especially books about mental illness because she suffers from dissociative identity disorder and she's very candid about this. And that's one thing that I, I really appreciate about her. So I picked up two books upon her recommendation. Alice by Christina Henry, and The Singular and Extraordinary Tale of Mirror and Goliath by Ishbel B. And now let's get a big fish out of the way. Who am I talking about? Of course, Jen Campbell. She has become the mother hen of booktube. Uh, for some reason, even though she's not that much older than a lot of people here on booktube, we just accept her authority in all things. And it might have to do with the fact that she is all up in the book business. She is a bookseller, a book writer, etc. And obviously a very well, well read woman. So of course I have some things that she forced me to pick up. The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan. The Book of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber. Wildwood by Colin Malloy, illustrated by Carson Ellis. Peter and Alice by John Logan. And Orlando by Virginia Woolf. Next, we have Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings. She is my favorite booktuber. And how do I know this? I know this because I have watched her entire backlist of videos multiple times. I know this because every time a new video of hers comes out, it's the first one I watch. I stop everything and watch the video, no matter what it is. And in times where I've been tossing and turning for an hour and a half in bed and I just can't get to sleep and I need something just to calm me down, what do I do? I rewatch some of Mercedes' old videos. And also whenever I'm in a reading slump or just feeling a bit like I'd rather be watching booktube videos, I'll watch her booktube videos, her reviews, and then feel inspired to pick up a book and read. A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. Fudoki by Kaij Johnson. Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell, The Robber Bride by Margaret Atwood, At the Mouth of the River of Bees by Kaj Johnson, The Melancholy of Mecca Girl by Catherine M. Valenti, St. Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves by Karen Russell. Next up is Elizabeth from Books and Pieces. I can't tell you how many times her videos have made me giggle out loud and just brightened my day. She's fun and thoughtful. She uses the most amazing vocabulary in her like wrap ups. Just any any time she's talking, it's just like you just fit in the word circumlocution or something like that. But upon her recommendation, I had to buy The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Next is Katie from Books and Things, and she is, she is making me read Charles Dickens, and I don't like Charles Dickens, or at least I've had to read Great Expectations twice in school and loathed having to do so both times. But her videos on how to speak Victorian and also recently What the Dickens just inspires me to pick up some more classic literature for which I am ever grateful. Villette by Charlotte Bronte, 
Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens, Dombey and Son by Charles Dickens, Little Dorrit by Charles Dickens. Don't worry, you're not seeing double. We're going to talk about this in a little bit. Next, I want to talk to you about Dan from Dan Martin Likes You. He is a baby booktuber, though not a baby human, and that is wonderful because we need some more variation on this booktube. I am sorry to yet again be another young white woman, but I think you guys like my face. That's fine. In less than two exchanges via the comments in one of my videos, he convinced me to pick up a book. A Constellation of Vital Phenomena by Anthony Mara. I have never bought a book with less thought than this one. So congratulations, Dan. You did something. Chinsia from C.A. Dubois, formerly Chauncey Boddington, is, seems like such a sweet darling of a person. And in a lot of her videos, I wish that I could just, in a non-creepy way, virtually reach out from my computer screen to give her a hug or a pat on the shoulder. She talks about so many books that I think I'm too dumb to read, but I know that's not the case. It's just that they might seem a little scary. Case in point, Moby Dick by Herman Melville, but I'm actually enjoying this immensely, so it just goes to show me not to underestimate myself. And thank you, Chinsia. Claire from Reading Bukowski is doing her bachelor's thesis, I think, on Virginia Woolf. And the way she talks about Virginia Woolf, I just, I, I obviously couldn't resist. The Waves by Virginia Woolf. To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Chelsea Bartlett has been booktubing for a bit of time, but isn't as active as I would like her to be. She seems like a sweet, sweet person, and I thoroughly enjoy doing her afternoon tea book tag. Her video on the adult Harry Potter series, the series that transitioned her from adolescence to adulthood, made me go out almost immediately to try to find this book. Luck in the Shadows by Lynn Flewelling. Now, before I go, I just want to share with you a few more names of booktubers of note in my life. Just because I haven't purchased any books upon their recommendation yet doesn't mean they're not important in my booktube subscription feed, if not general life well-being. So here we go. First up is Victoria from A Hermit's Progress. She just seems like such a lovely human being and has treated me so kindly and with such, such consideration and... It's sad, but most of the time I don't expect that, so she's a wonderful breath of fresh air in my intellectual and bookish life. She is just, she seems like such a darling, and I'm hoping to do more buddy reads with her in the future. We have some set up. So, by the way, Victoria, Calvino is on the way, so we'll see when things work out. Claire Quigley, with a channel by the same name, has struggled with things like depression and anxiety and has recently talked about it on her channel, which is very courageous and I applaud her most heartily. She loves weird fiction. Think H.P. Lovecraft, China Mieville, Jeff Vandermeer. And though I have tried China Mieville in the past and was very icked out by it, I'm sure that in the future she will probably inspire me, nay, coerce me, to trying something else in the weird fiction genre. Brittany from Under the Radar Books has quickly grown a fairly large fan base as far as booktube is concerned. I'm so impressed. She has a dark spin taste on my general book taste, so I have yet to actually be coerced to pick anything up by her, but I feel that this is imminent. Also, you will hopefully be seeing an an unboxing video from me as I purchased a blind date with a book from her Etsy store. Jacob Tanner is hysterical. He's a Canadian living in London, which is a lovely little flavor. And somehow I feel kin to him because I'm living in Canada, even though I'm an American and he is from the East Coast and I live on the West. Whatever. He is just really funny, very goofy, kind of a goofball, but goofballs are the best. You know, like, I'm pretty sure that's why half of you guys are here is because I'm just a big derpy derp and am fine with it. He's reading a lot of YA on his channel right now. I'm not a huge fan of YA, but he is certainly convincing me that I need to give it another shot. That Divergent is not the only thing that's coming out of YA right now. And lastly, Alina from Marlin Alina. I have decided that we're going to be friends 
because she knits and it does books and stuff. She is at the moment studying abroad in Sweden, though she's from Switzerland, so she's probably the most diverse booktuber that I am in semi-friendly acquaintance terms with. I don't know how to put that. She uploads some very, very thoughtful videos on like booktubing, how to life and everything like that. She's very thoughtful and seems like it would be a lot of fun to hang out with her. If only an ocean and several countries didn't divide us. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If I didn't mention your name, but you know that I watch your channel, fear not. I'm sure I'll be doing more videos like this in the future. Also on my channel, there's a sidebar in my channel homepage with all of the booktubers. Everyone I have ever watched, continue to watch, newly watch, I try to keep that updated. So if you ever need inspiration or want to find a new channel to binge watch over the weekend, please check that out. There are a ton of fabulous people, fabulous booktubers listed there. Thank, thank, thank you for watching. And until next time, go find some lovely booktubers and continue to be lovely. I've had to read Great Expectations, and and it retains, and it is a lot more. Where are my words? Dementia. Okay, so you're still here. Wonderful, because we need to address this shite. Like, are you kidding me? Okay, so can you see that these are the same painting on the front of these? Classic books, this just epitomizes how publishers just disservice classics. Like seriously, Wordsworth and Penguin, you couldn't do some research. I think it's actually Wordsworth is the problem. This edition of Dombey and Son is like 1985 or something like that. This one's 2002 or something like that. Seriously, like I know it's not the same publisher, but it's the same author, two different titles, and you're using the same picture for these two distinctly different books, I bet. I mean, I haven't read both of them, but I bet you they're different books. So interestingly enough, this, on the back of this book, it lists this painting as Florence Dombey in Captain Cuddle's Parlor by William Ma Edgeley. That would be inappropriate then, because if this is a painting of Florence Dombey, yeah, it probably should be on Dombey and Son. This, however, just calls it Girl in White, Girl in White. So in the course of 20 years, 70 years after the painting could have possibly been painted, we've changed the painting's name and decided to put, this is just frustrating in a laughable way. Like I was at a used bookstore and wanted to pick these up and ask the attendant to help me because they were up too high and I'm not seven feet tall. And when she pulled down one, I was like, oh, okay, that cover, eh. It's a thing. And then when she pulled down the second one, my face was just like this. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Get ready for a rant, it's happening. Okay, so I am so irritated with the way that publishers in the past, they're catching up, especially Penguin with their cloth-bound editions and the Penguin English Library. But most other in the past and present, that publishing companies are publishing classics, they publish them to look disposable, boring, and just like s without personality. The fact that you can take even like the picture of Dorian Gray and people will just slap any sort of portrait of a young man on the front and just go like, yeah, the picture of Dorian Gray, isn't my cover design really awesome? No, it's not. Your cover design is lazy and boring and it alienates everyone under the age of 52 to feel like they could identify with this book and enjoy it is what you're doing. Frankly, most of the time with the old classics that have a rep reproduction of an oil painting on the cover, you would draw more people in with some interesting typography rather than wasting time, you know, scrolling through Getty images, trying to find old timey picture of lady for Jane Eyre. Like, are you kidding me? I could probably design some classic covers, and I have zero graphic design knowledge better than some examples we have from yawn 80s or even like today when it's lazy. And so this is instance here where we've got two Charles Dickens books, two distinctly different Charles Dickens books with the exact same portrait of a lady on the front to dictate them. It's just so frustrating. The only reason I would see that you should use a painting 
you know, an old timey painting on the front cover is if, if Dombey and Son is correct, this is a painting of Florence Dombey. So appropriate. It's almost like you're putting fan art on the front cover of this. Or if it's a painting of a landscape depicting the Suffolk countryside and the book you're reading takes place only in the Suffolk countryside. It'd be nice for you to get like a visual of what you're going to be reading about rather than blindly trying to like piece together what this English countryside would look like. That's fine. But in most other instances, can't tell you how many editions of Frankenstein I have seen that just has like solitary dude hiking on a mountain and he's just got like a nice dainty walking stick and he's totally like put together. I haven't read Frankenstein. I think some scene takes place on a mountaintop, but I'm pretty sure he's not dainty with a walking stick at the time. So to end on a nice note though, Penguin seems to be doing a really good job with their cloth bound and their English library editions. They seem thoughtful, pertaining to the works in general, and beautiful objects that don't look like something that you should just like use as toilet paper when you run out, which most old-timey, not old-timey, but most older edition classics kind of look. I mean, this doesn't say cherish me forever, does it? No, it doesn't. Thank you for sticking around for that rant. I just couldn't let it go. <laughs> for reals now, continue to be lovely. <laughs>